What's going on guys, Carve you guys here. My name is AJ and today, this week, we have the 2024 Mazda MX-5 Miata. And this is the Grand Touring trim level. This is gonna be the full review. We are going, if you're new to my channel, we are going to start with the cinematic, usually one minute or less. Then we are going to go over the exterior, uh, stats figures, stuff like that, whenever we're doing it. And then we will be taking it on a drive after we look at the interior, of course. Nonetheless, over 21,000 subscribers. Thank each and every one of you. Next video, five things to love, five things to improve. Without further ado, let's get right on into this review. Let's roll. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that cinematic. So let's start with some of the stats and figures. This MX-5 Miata is a two liter four cylinder pushing 181 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque. Transmission in this one in particular is a six speed manual, but you can also get a six speed auto. Drivetrain is rear wheel drive. Curb weight, you're looking at right around 2,403 pounds, which is gonna be pushing this MX-5 from zero to 60 in about seven seconds. Of course, this car is not all about zero to 60 and we will get into that further in detail. MPG 26 city, 34 highway and 29 average. Gas tank 11.9 gallons. And then let's touch on vehicle dimensions. Overall length 12.8 feet, overall width 5.6 feet and ground clearance is about five inches. Pricing starts at 28,985. Tester today is 362, including the destination charge. While we are here in the rear, in order to pop the trunk, there is a button right under here. If you just hold it, pull it up. And it is not all that big. Um, it's not terrible, but it's definitely a pretty small space. Uh, this is my drone bag here. You can see there's definitely some more, but I will put on the screen right here what the actual space is. Now let's go over some of the things you may or may not notice. Uh, to me, honestly, kind of Ferrari-esque taillights, just saying. Uh, and then you have the backup camera located right there. You have the exhaust located over here on the right-hand side. You have your little antenna. These wheels are pretty sharp looking, and in case you're wondering, they are 205-45-17s. That is the size on them. As far as keyless entry, it does have it. You just press the button to lock it or unlock it. And then moving on up, you can see got the little light here, uh, which uh, also incorporates the blinker. And then you have all LED uh, super bright headlamps and they do turn as you turn as well. Before we jump inside, just taking a look at the door panel. So this is obviously painted, uh, which is the same as the exterior. And right here's a pretty good shot, I think. You can see a lot of the flake in there. It's definitely a nice looking paint. It's not just a white. Um, you've got like a carbon fiber kind of look here. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, pretty standard basic buttons, nothing fancy. And then this is padded, even though obviously very small, but there is nothing in this car that is big, uh, unsurprisingly, obviously. All right, if you're new to my channel, I am five foot nine. I always test, is it easy to get in to vehicles or not? And it is even for me it's tight got it go down and then duck just a little bit your legs are nice and tight of course i have the seat up a little bit because it is a manual so i gotta go to push in the clutch and now we're in so uh for a smaller car it's not terrible but obviously it's a smaller car so especially if you're older it's probably not going to be the easiest thing to get in unless you're flexible and or very small because 
I'm not a big person by any stretch, but it is tight. All right, now that we are in here, so this would be the point of view. This is exactly what I see. So if I check over to the right, you can see this, it's just so small and you're so close that this mirror actually takes up a lot of your view, which is kind of interesting. Never been in a vehicle that the rear view mirror actually like takes up your view. Um, mirror, easy to see. I don't see any problems. Checking over like a blind spot, not much of one, maybe just a little bit. And then checking over to our left, Again, not really, it's a pretty long door, so no real issues. Taking a look at the steering wheel, pretty standard for Mazda, to be honest with you. Over here on the left, you have all of your infotainment buttons, and then over on the right is all of your cruise control settings, um, light controls over here on the left. You can see pretty much all analog uh, for the most part, other than over here on the left, that it actually is a screen in there. Um, so the far, the middle and the far right are analog, but then over here you do have a screen. To be honest, personally, I wish it was just all screen, but not a huge deal. This vehicle is necessarily not about that or features. Speaking of which, over here you do have uh, climate control, so single zone, which obviously small cabins, not a big deal. Uh, you can see the auto button there, it is all dials and then you have heated seats right there you cannot get cooled seats in case you were wondering up above we do have home link on the mirror this is auto dimming and then also this is auto dimming as well at night and then in typical mazda fashion you've got all of this to control the screen moving on down this little thing pops up to be honest you're probably going to fit like a wallet in there not much is going to fit all right, let's go through some of the gears really quick. So just so you can see them, there's the gear pattern. You push down into the far left for reverse. So we'll start with that, just like that. There is your backup camera. Obviously camera through camera, not as good. It's a hair grainy, but it's also pretty clear. So it's not like distorted or anything. So not bad. All right, and then let's go to first. We'll put the camera up above so you can see kind of second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So not the shortest of gears, but also not the tallest of gears. Um, so I'm sure you could put an actual short throw in here if you really wanted to. Don't see why you would. Um, it's also, it feels very analog. So even whenever it's in here, you can probably see my hand kind of shaking. You can feel everything in this car and it's all about the driver's experience, which I definitely think Mazda has done. Speaking of which, I think it's time we get this thing out on the road. Honestly, again, you can feel and hear everything in this car. I'm hoping, I have a road mic, okay? So this is not just low production stuff. I'm hoping that it turns out. Sometimes on noisier cars, the audio just isn't as good. So I'm gonna try my best, go on the smoothest roads possible so you guys can hear. Without further ado, let's get it out on the road. As far as clutch feel goes, um, it, it really likes to go. I mean, like right there, I was almost on just a hair of an incline and all I did was let the clutch out nice and smooth don't have to give it any gas and it just starts rolling forward and then it can fully engage let off on the clutch and then you go so if you need a tutorial on how to drive stick i've got that video as well uh feel free to check that out i did that in my what did i have at that time i think a c7z um but nonetheless this vehicle as far as like trying to learn stick on i think is really easy you don't have necessarily a lot of the tone like engine noise to like hear but you can really feel it. And I think that's what Mazda's for sure meaning when driver's experience. Like, again, I can feel everything in this car. Um, whether, if you like that, then this is the car for you. If you don't, then just being honest, it's probably not the car for you, right? Um, but this car would be an absolute riot to drive on the track. Like, this thing would be so fun. Like, it's not about zero to 60. Like. You know, again, I'm a supercar owner. Uh, I've got an Actor NSX now. We've had C7Zs, we've had Audi R8s, we've had a bunch of various things. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, is so many people think that they can push the car to their limit. There's like 1% of all population, if that, that can push a car to its limit. Now, in this car, there's a lot of people that can just push this car to its absolute limit. Um, and not get in too much trouble. And that's where this car is just exciting and this car is fun because again, it's not all about zero to 60. You can really throw this car around and it's really fun.
All right, let's test the acceleration just a little bit here. First gear and here we go. See, like it'll still throw you back. I mean, like it's still there. It's just not, you know what I mean? Like it, man, I am being blinded by the sun. I have to go this direction though, because I try to show you guys the cattle guard to drive over it so you can kind of see the suspension and stuff. So let's talk on noise really quickly, right? So as I've already told you, you can hear and feel everything in this car. So I've done the review on the RF, which is basically the hard top convertible. This is the soft top convertible. And the hard top convertible is going to reduce the noise a little bit. This has a little bit of extra noise being the convertible. It's not crazy different, but there is a difference. So keep that in mind with what your wants, needs, desires are. So tire noise, you can hear it. You can definitely feel it. You feel as one with this car. Wind noise, again, you can hear that. Engine noise, that you don't hear as much, only whenever you're really winding it out. So those are my three categories for noise. Suspension, you can feel everything. So we're coming up to a cat the cattle guard we go over every week. Let's see how the suspension does and how the noise does as well. All right, here we go. <laughs> so if you watch some of my other reviews, you'll definitely see that I moved a decent amount. It absorbed quickly, but I moved a decent amount, meaning that, you know, it's a very stiff suspension, which again, expected on this car. I don't expect it to be soft. Noise, definitely on the louder side, which again, expected. It's all about driver experience. Like, I don't know if you ever heard the saying, if I throw a quarter on the road and you run over it, I should be able to tell you what uh, side it is, heads or tails. And this basically is what this feels like, right? Like I can feel everything in it. And it's really fun to throw the gears around. It's nice to still have some technology, which is good. Um, but yeah, it, it's, this is definitely a car that for me would be a track car. Like that, that's the purpose for this. Um, not everyone's gonna have that purpose. The other thing that I could think of that would be great is this thing fits in almost any toy hauler like because it's so small. So this is a car that you could take with you and be able to just like commute around town and stuff like that if you're a traveler. So definitely another use case for it as well. I do wanna say this car really, oh, there went a little Roadrunner. Those things are so neat. Uh, I do wanna say this car is very, very, again, attached to the driver. Like everything is smaller. You feel in total control of this car. And that's what I do enjoy about this car is you really do feel as one and it's very analog and you don't get that in a lot of cars nowadays. But again, you have to decide if that's something you like or you don't, that is totally up to you. Let's touch on the handling very quickly. We are coming up to a little turn. Let's take this turn at like 25 miles an hour and 25. Like you just have the just most confidence. Like I could just throw this car anywhere and it's just sticking. Or even if it doesn't, I could totally like throw it into a gear, e-brake, like totally in control. That's where this car again is absolutely fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Next video is going to be five things to love, five things to improve. New vehicle next week, new press car every single week if you didn't know. And uh, if you have any questions, comment down below. I try to respond to everyone. As always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.